Uh, Brian, I, I have a question for you. Uh, hit me. What is your, of all the taxonomies of living beings, what would you say is the least threatening of all, the least scary of all, of all Tax- living beings? So taxonomy of living beings. Um, yeah, you know, I, your five yeah. your kingdoms, you're kind of one of those. Uh, yeah, I mean, so animals, animals can certainly be threatening. We can be taken out by animals. Sure. Aliens, I don't know where they rank, but very scared of them. Sure, um, sure. It's, uh, God, I, I have to, I have to think about it, but like, once we get down into like grass, <laughs> that's pretty li- technically alive. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's in there. You got a moss, you got a grass. I feel like a surprising one, probably one of the most scary, maybe bacteria. Oh, I forgot right about bacteria. Edge. Yeah. No, that's, you know if anything, I mean? last couple of years have, have shown that that's a thing that we <laughs> Here, So yeah, here's the thing. Nobody ever suspects vegetation. Nobody sees a cut. Like, you think maybe of a Venus flytrap kind of situation. But even then, I can get out of that. I don't think a fucking Venus flytrap yeah, can keep me in. I'm attracted to the honey, to the <laughs> sweet nectar inside of it. Who, I'll get a little who hasn't wanted there. to lick a Venus flytrap? <laughs> I bet it's delicious in there. You just pry that. That could be the that could be the cheat code. We're strong enough to pry open a Venus flytrap. <laughs> Has anyone tried it? Has anyone it. licked a Venus flytrap? We can get out we of that. Do, yeah, we could do it. We could be the first. Just cut to us. Just trawling <laughs> alien face hug. <laughs> by a venus flytrap i was definitely more afraid of venus flytraps as a kid than uh maybe was needed to be i think i think i saw jumanji one too many times i agree i was also very i was also very threatened by them uh brian it's brian and eric don't belong here stay with us I'm Eric. I'm here with my co-host and wonderful colleague, Brian. This is Brian and Eric up along here. Welcome to another evening of the wonderful, the weird, the strange, and the mysterious. We're talking killer plants! <laughs> killer plants? No! Yeah, we have M. Night Shyamalan has been right since, like, 2008. Did you see that fucking movie? <laughs> yeah, what, didn't he make a movie about, like, corn? Like, corn gone bad? <laughs> no, it was... <laughs> It was so. It was called the happening. Emily and I like watched it kind of recently, um, and it was like, oh man! Suddenly, like the wind blows through, and everyone starts killing each, killing themselves, uh, and then it's revealed that it's the plants fighting back. You know what I hate about this as a chronic Claritin user is this is just <laughs> a bad allegory for seasonal allergies. That's. Not climate change, seasonal no. allergies. That's right. Fuck you, Shyamalan. <laughs> did you see the movie about the beach that makes you old? I did see the beach that makes <laughs> you old movie. My girlfriend loved that movie, and we literally almost broke up over it. I was so <laughs> mad at so much. She's like, I thought it was good. The beach makes you old. I was, I, I was so... I was so into the pre like it's such a fun like premise uh, and that yeah, trailer yeah, yeah. is like pretty a it would have been way better if they didn't tell you that's what was happening in the trailer yeah, yeah um yeah. but uh it, and there was some fun stuff there was the weird cave skeleton lady um yeah, that was cool. but um that movie's dumb as a bag of fucking rocks <laughs> so many holes in the plot I feel like, dude, you're right. They they really did give it all up in the trailer, which mm. I feel like that's antithetical to the whole M. Night Shyamalan thing. Which I understand you have to sell the movie. I, I understand yeah, yeah. that, like, M. Night Shyamalan made a movie. It's about people on a beach. What happens yeah. to them on the beach? I can't tell yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, who knows? They yeah. just stay the same age. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. They definitely don't age rapidly yeah. on this beach. Why would you think <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would love to be in that like development or like that marketing meeting where they're trying to convince they're like, there's nothing here. <laughs> we have to just say it all because there's nothing. There, there's what nothing else, else. What else do you do? <laughs> yeah. Um I um I don't want to spoil kind of the ending, even though it's fucking uh, stupid. Uh, yeah, that made me mad. There's a there's a third act twist as M Night Shyamalan is is wont to do, uh, and it's dumb as a bag of rocks. Not in the original short story that it's based on. Oh, I didn't even realize. That's that. all M Night, baby. <laughs> wow. Just a bad wow. decision. Uh, there's a great video about it. I don't remember the title of it um, on Cracked.com's YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, Jordan Breeding kind of broke it down of why it's very dumb and doesn't make any sense. Does he do that? Does M. Night do that? Does he do a lot of like short story adaptations? I didn't even realize. That I don't that was... know. I don't know if that's like yeah, yeah. his thing. Um, but Old was a short story, I, I believe. Ah. I literally always forget when we do this show that you are a very knowledgeable cinemaphile it, and you went to film school. It is it is the main thing I know. Yeah, yeah, you know a lot. You actually know quite a bit. I, I can't remember. I don't know. Everything that happens on a screen just blends. I've seen one movie. <laughs> it's all one continuous loop to me. Um, no, I love movies. I think they're yeah, good. They're- I like they them. Are, they're, you know what? Good. Can't watch a book. No, you can't. I try. Well, I have one on my desk. I do keep an eye on it, but nothing ever happens. Um, so, Eric, you said we can't watch a book. So, uh, you said we're talking about killer plants, but uh, I, I assume we're not just talking about M. Night Shyamalan's The Happening. <laughs> well, I think we can. I can. I can. Yeah, I'm going to say. Okay, while well, I'm on. Pod. <laughs> while I'm on this wreck, I while I'm on this, I don't remember yeah. who shot who is the director of photography on the village, but it's a mm. it's not a great movie, but it's a beautifully shot movie. It's uh, very cool. It's very fun. Yes. And then I once again I don't know who the uh director of photography on the happening was, but it feels like it's shot on a fucking iPhone. It's ugly as fuck. Uh, oh, dude, there he's really running on fumes at this point. <laughs> I feel like he has finally ran out of the just incredible amount of credit that he generated with the sixth sense. And it's and it's, it's all just purely, purely the gone. sixth sense. <laughs> That's it. That was just one good move. Imagine making a movie so good. That you can make bad movies <laughs> for the rest for the of next your career. Half, forever, forever. And ever, forever. And everyone, myself included, goes, maybe this is the one that turns it around. Literally, yes. <laughs> Literally. They're all, and they're not even close. That's the thing. <laughs> I kind of like the um, Bruce Willis has, Bruce. what's that fucking one called? Um, Unbreakable. Unbreakable. I kind of like that one, but also I haven't seen it since I was like 13. So who the I've fuck heard knows? That's the other maybe good one. Okay. But The Sixth Sense is excellent. 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 Um, Great movie. Scary. The twist is incredible. I, the, the twist that like, I, I, did you like genuinely get hit with the twist or did you know it by the time you saw it? No, I got hit with the twist. I, I saw it in theaters with my mom and just one of if you grew up and you knew the ending to the sixth sense like mm-hmm. it, like just through pop culture you don't know what it was like in that theater just sitting there like oh, yeah i didn't know movies were allowed to do that i didn't know <laughs> i didn't know that yeah. was allowed i feel like there was actually a lot of meaningful public cinema moments like in the 90s like do you remember did you see independence day in the theaters not in theaters but shortly after it came out like what once it was available at blockbuster i'd seen it i just remember and many people have this experience of people literally clapping during independence day (laughs) as if a real thing had just happened (laughs) come on when bill Pullman gives that fucking speech come on you gotta come on yeah you can't not clap um so maybe, you know, I, I think perhaps in a world, this is the worst segue of all time, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we, we may be facing our own Independence Day move uh, moment soon because of killer plants, Brian. Killer they're plants. On, they're on killer plants. I want to bring it back. I want to circle back to killer okay. plants. Okay. Okay. So, so this, yeah. Sorry, no, go sorry. Ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, I stumbled on this on Twitter. 
you don't, you know, we, we kind of talked about this in the intro. You don't really think, you're not really too worried about plants. Yeah, there's some maybe poisonous mushrooms is like the scariest thing, but we're not, as a human being, Right. what if I told you we've taught a plant how to wield a machete? I would say, A, no, we haven't. And B, <laughs> who the fuck did that? And also, whoever's, if, if we have, whoever is responsible should be hanged by the neck until dead. <laughs> Dude, we were we were joking about this before the show, but it, it literally does feel like we really are just playing with all the fires. We're just rolling every kind of dice. We're flirting of, with nuclear has war. Has it not been like, enough? Is it not enough? Yeah. Of like, yeah, let's can we chill. <laughs> is there not enough novelty in the world right now in ways exactly. we can yeah. all end? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're fine. There's no need for this. I know we all need to keep escalating things to give attention, but it's like, man, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, the tensions are back up with Russia. Democracy is crumbling. And I gave a plant a machete. Fuck you. Yeah. No. Yeah, we don't know how to use it. Uh, <laughs> this is, I don't know. What should we do? Should we watch, should we watch the video? Should we kind of like talk through what I, the fuck is happening? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Do you have a, a link to it? Yeah, I have the link. I'll put it in, uh. Oh wait, I actually have it here. I can um Okay. Oh, you okay, great. You did it. Um I had it all set up. I was more prepared. Uh I put it I did put it in our our weird news compendium. Beautiful. Um Okay, so I, I'm loading this up right now on our little screen. Uh so this is actually done by uh artist David Bowen. Um yes. who who appears to be an artist and um I'm going to throw out there I don't like this art. <laughs> Yeah, bad art. Dude, a painting. <laughs> Considered a sculpture. <laughs> Just you, an inanimate thing. You could have paint. Like. You could paint all the plants with fucking swords you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sword plant. Though I will say, this could be maybe the coolest like comic book character of all time. <laughs> Just a house plant with a katana. And that's so. It's there's not. It's how how would you describe this? How would you describe what what is playing on our screen right now? So here's all I see. Here's what I want to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to describe what I see and then describe my questions about this because we're all about piercing to the truth <laughs> on the show. <laughs> what I see is a house plant sort of mounted on a strange thing on the wall, and then it's got these like diodes or electrodes. I don't even know what these are called, but like, you know, the things if you like go to the hospital, those little sticky things that have wires running right. out of them, they put on your chest. I'm like, there's like two of them on two leaves, <laughs> and they run to a robotic arm, at, which has sort of multiple joints. And at the end of it is a machete. It's wielding machete. And this arm is just sort of flailing around, sort of swinging the machete around. Uh, and that and that's let's be clear i'm gonna i'm gonna play the video but uh so you, you can maybe hear that right now um i i want to be clear that's the whole video it's it's it. <laughs> i love you okay there's three i love that though that it's just on the leaf there's just three of them on a leaf what does that do how does that so um, I, I'm on the official website here, uh, uh, David Bowen's website, and and there's a there's plantmachete.com. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and the the copy here is this installation enables a live plant to control a machete. Yep. What I'm not past is why the arm would be enough. <laughs> here's my here's my skeptical here's my skeptical side. I, I maybe had the same question. Go ahead. What if the electrodes, what if there is no, like, connection between the plant? What and if the there's remote? a guy with a remote? Just... <laughs> yeah, just in it, behind it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But no, let's pretend, let's take this at its word and say that this really is somehow, the plant is somehow doing this. Uh, plant Machete has a control system that reads and utilizes the electrical noises found in a live philodendron. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. That famous plant. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's like if you're, it's it's literally, though they, you probably, everybody's probably seen this. It's just like a classic, like shitty house plant. It, right, right. It, it's in your Bushwick girlfriend's apartment. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
The system uses an open source microcontrolled connect uh, microcontroller connected to the plant to read varying resistance signals across the pr- the plant's leaves. Using custom software, these signals are mapped in real time to the movements of the joints of the industrial robot holding a machete. In this way, the movements of the machete are determined based on the input from the plant. Essentially, the plant is the brain of the robot uh, controlling the machete, determining how it swings, jab, slices, and interacts in the space. Uh, That's the other thing. The arm, like, moves around (laughs) and stabs. This plant is pissed. What is funny is, like, I feel like you kind of can't get to the off switch without sort of having to dodge this machine. <laughs> so, um, I, my question is, I, obviously I'm racking my brain of once again of like, why machine, why give the plant a, why could you, po- why would you possibly do this? Why would you? Yeah, because a it's also worth noting, like unless unless David Bowen here knows something we don't know, the plant is not consciously controlling the machete; it's electrical signals from the plant being translated into arm movements. the The plant doesn't have a brain that's like, "I will stab now." Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think. So. I don't think the the plant is like thrust, parry, report. Course, like right. I don't think that's happening. But yeah, it's some kind of signals in the plant. You know what this made me think of that would be super cool? If we could use robots and AI or whatever the fuck else to like, what if plant like what if plants could talk somehow? <laughs> and what would they say? What would they say, Eric? <laughs> I like a sad. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the water. <laughs> so I do um I, I I wonder if this will take the piss out of the whole thing. Like maybe I figured it out. Um, but uh, so here's the thing: if if David Bowen had just said, "Hey, I hooked up these things and I've mapped the uh, electrical like signals from the plants," and here's a little diagram of sort of the electrical signals of what's yeah, yeah, what's yeah. coming from the plant, we'd be like boring, and we right. certainly wouldn't be talking about it on our fucking stupid podcast. Right, right, right. On the other hand, I gave this fucking plant a machete, and we're like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, what now? Yeah. What now, bitch? <laughs> um, but I did, I did a little poking around, um, and this is not David Bowen's first rodeo in technology and plants. Dude, I was looking at his other projects, too. It's very interesting. Uh, let's see. He has um, a... Uh, <laughs> That audio is useless if you're not looking at this very dark video. Uh, but he similarly has hooked up a drone. So the plant yep. is essentially piloting a drone. Um, somebody else. I have this article here from iflscience.com. And the headline is, Scientists have finally taught salad to send out emails. At last. <laughs> well, my job is toast. Can't believe I got replaced by a salad. <laughs> it's terrible. This is literally every office worker's nightmare. Every just like generalized liberal arts degree holding information worker is like fuck. Eric, we we've had uh, jobs together before. Uh, yeah. One job, we one job together before where we sat next to each other and we would get emails, emails sent directly to us. Uh, yeah. From companies advertising, like we have a computer system that just does your job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I'm We're like I'm not just going to immediately delete that and not tell my boss about it. <laughs> it's a thing. It's literally yeah. You're right. It's literally like we've automated away your entire position. Please connect us with your boss immediately. Like, nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> not not today. No, I no. I'm really really happy in this job that I know is fundamentally useless. <laughs> I hope, I hope there is a startup that is built around salad emailer. <laughs> so yeah, we gotta we gotta see what's up with it. <laughs> you can email salad. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah. Can you email the salad, or does the salad only email you? Right. <laughs> Are you just gonna get cornered at a party by this fucking salad who's got things to <laughs> I say hope about? So. 
I hope so. It's more interesting than me. I'm positive. Uh, okay, so I've got here from this article once again from iflscience.com. They've trained rats, bees, and even dolphins to sniff out landmines, but scientists are now turning their attention to an even more unlikely bomb-detecting ally, spinach. Wow. Classic. Already famous for its health benefits, spinach could soon add even more years onto people's lives. <laughs> I know this is true, that yes... Um, that yes of course helping people avoid stepping on bombs and landmines would in fact uh, uh, extend lots of people's lives this is true but I don't know if that's how I would phrase it I would leave it at will help people not step on bombs (laughs) that's just me (laughs) Uh, (laughs) do you like to extend your life have you considered not stepping on a bomb Hey, uh, I'm just imagining coming into a bird. Hey, welcome. We got this spinach. Uh, and if you're worried about bombs, carry yeah, a, a, a thread. <laughs> uh, this is thanks to the work of researchers from the Massachusetts Institute, Institute of Technology who used a technique called vascular infusion to introduce car- blah, 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 fucking blah. Tell me about how. The, tell me how. <laughs> Yeah, Explain yeah, yeah. like I'm five how the spinach stops bombs. <laughs> I got a bomb five inches under my feet right now. We gotta really pick up the pace on this thing. I have a bomb and a bowl of spinach, a giant bowl of spinach in my hands. I really need to know how to go from A to B here. <laughs> the researchers focused on a night aromatic called picric acid as the acid is absorbed from the groundwater by the plant's roots it is transported into the mesophyll layer of the underside of the leaf where the photosynthesis takes place and where a nanotube uh is waiting to detect it oh my god boring you know Isn't even science without a nanotube now That's i'm back na- like once just back to my point i see why the other guy just gave the fucking plants a machete <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's this really is reinvigorating plant-based science. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, uh, I, I'm having a... I had a sudden flashback. I'm a sophomore in high school. I'm in a uh, biology class. Okay. Um, I do not remember the teacher's name, but I probably shouldn't say it anyway. Um, okay. And report cards are coming out. And in front of everyone, my biology teacher looks at my report... Or it was... Mi- it, for some reason, they were handing out report cards like in class. Uh, uh, this was before my school started mailing them home. But she oh, she looked at my report card in front of the class and just went, oh, I'm just seeing if you're only doing poorly in my class. <laughs> that seems mean. That it was, seems uh, unnecessary. Honestly, it was metal as fuck. And I... <laughs> There is a part of me that wishes I was just a burned out teacher. Right, right. You know, that'd be cool. <laughs> Maybe that's the dream. I, I mean, yeah. aside from aside from the fact that you make no money and uh, all the teenagers hate you. Yeah, you just get bullied by. Honestly, teenagers are so terrible. They're so scary. They're so bullied brutal. by teens. Yeah, they're really bad. I feel like they'd make me cry. I don't think I could do that job. I know I'm I'm way too sensitive. Are you I'm too fragile. Yeah, I can't. I can't do that shit. Because so this yeah. So they're usually ahead. right, is the thing. They usually pinpoint oh, the thing I am right sensitive. to the core. Oh, they just tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely just eviscerated. Ugh. They're terrible. Ugh. 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 Um, so dude, so this guy, I don't know how far down his other this guy kind of rules. He has he has another I guess exhibit uh, or installation called fly blimps. This installation oh, I don't consists like that. of a series of autonomous helium filled blimps whose movements are controlled by small collectives of house flies. The flies are essentially the brain of each of the devices, determining how they interact and respond to the space as well as the other devices. Up to 50 house flies live within the chambers attached to each blimp unit. These chambers contain food, water, and allow light, the light needed to keep the flies alive and flourishing. 
The chamber also contain the chambers also contain sensors that detect the changing light patterns produced by the movement of the flies. In real time, the sensors send this information to an onboard microcontroller. The controller activates the motors connected to the propellers that direct the devices based on the actions of the flies. The floating wandering blimps are separate but intersecting community vehicles. The flies exist in their own self-contained and self-sustaining worlds, collectively creating an amplified and exaggerated expression of group behavior. I feel like this guy is just a sick fuck with an MFA who learns just like does these weird experiments and then writes very academic paragraphs, like <laughs> justifying what he did. But like, you just put a bunch of flies in a blimp. They're controlling the blimp. It's awesome. It's definitely like, yeah, guy with an MFA mixed with a seven year old who you're a little concerned about. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. How, but this how is, you, this I, is what art should be. Yeah. I have the picture up here. How how would you describe the? I know he described the picture in like his little copy there. How how would you, Eric Brenner, describe the picture on our screen right now? It's so it's like a floating orb filled with disgusting flies, but it's cool. It is kind of like a spaceship. The orb kind of looks like a spaceship. Would you not agree? It's like got I, yeah. some cool lights in it and stuff. Yeah, uh, and there's just a a horde of just just gross flies floating around, suspended from this blimp. It's like a balloon, and somehow they're kind of mo- they're they're flying around with it. They're it, they're controlling it. But here's the thing: of like, so the 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 flies aren't make aren't aware of anything outside of the fucking bubble that they live. That's in. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's not accurate to say they're controlling it. They're just doing their thing inside the sphere, and their movements are inputs into the direction of the blimp. Right, and it, it and I under. So my question is like, why are we doing this? And I understand that the answer is because I could. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. This is a thing. I feel like this guy learned read one chapter in like cool robot shit one hundred and one, <laughs> and then just went ham. Which like maybe there's an element of like this step opens up doors to like another step someday. Um, yes. But I'm worried that that next step is fucking spinach in robot suits with fucking sick ninja skills. Yeah, 100 percent. I hope that happens. Being honestly. Fucking parachuted in by flies controlling uh, like terrible fucking zeppelins. Exactly. I can't wait to just get killed by broccoli. Dude. Honestly, just... may as well. Right. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I think. That's the way we go out. Just killed by broccoli. It's um. Have you um? Have you heard of the uh the UK like seventies television series Threads? No. It was a uh, no, it was I a mini series, and it was basically about what if a uh, nuclear attack happened in Britain. Um, and it okay. explored. It, it was a two hour thing, and it like explored the like fallout of that. Everything from like. The bomb hits to the mm. fallout to everyone getting sick to the what okay. the government looks like after it was horror. It was like one of the just like harrowing television events that gave kids nightmares of like, oh my god, this could happen. Um, okay, and I'm just so I was watching the thing on that today. Uh, I didn't watch the whole <clears throat> thing, but I, I saw the highlights and it very harrowing television. Man, nuclear war would be a terrible way to go. Yeah, I'd not much. Good. I'd much prefer getting stabbed by a fucking carrot. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll I'll go out that way. Just karate chopped by a watercress. We'll just <laughs> fucking just a can of V eight that is yeah. like out of metal. <laughs> that's Gear the solid. ultimate boss. Yeah, that's the <laughs> final form. Revenge. <laughs> Do you like V eight? Do you drink V eight? I drink V eight. It's a like it's a recent it. it's a recent thing that I'm into. I um I don't know if it's actually good for me. I just know it's salty. <laughs> it's so salty and good. It's good, it's really man. Nice. It's, it's, are you a, are you a Bloody Mary guy? I am a Bloody Mary guy. Yeah. yeah um. Nice. That was I I had a delicious can of V8 this morning. Of mm. uh, my wife and I were watching Bachelor in Paradise. Uh, oh, yeah. the that aired last night. Uh, and you know we we made we got up. We, you know, got our computers, we got to work, but we made breakfast, and um, uh-huh. A, probably wouldn't be good to be drinking while we're working, B, she's uh, six months pregnant. Wow. Uh, so, uh, you know, instead of instead of Bloody Marys, we, we just had a V8, and it was almost as good. That's the same, you throw a little, throw a little celery stick in there, you're halfway there. Right, right. 
Uh, so I just want, I don't want to spend the entire episode talking about this guy, but I will say, I just found one more thing <laughs> is I won't read the whole thing, but he invented his other exhibit. He, he just keeps one upping himself. It's called <laughs> fly revolver. And it's literally I'm instead so of a machete of on a robot arm, it's literally a revolver. It's a handgun on the end of a robot arm controlled by a swarm of flies. I think me- I do see the fly revolver now. Uh, my internet is acting up. It might take a second. Uh, but, uh, I think maybe I cannot see the fly revolver right now, but I think this man needs to be stopped. (laughs) He's on a dangerous trajectory. I think we can agree. I think we can all agree. This is, uh, you know how, uh, like most of the plot of Terminator two was like having to go and like stop the guy who starts the fucking Terminator shit incidentally who like creates the technology and like this will lead to fucking terminators it might be this fucking guy i hope it is he's such he's actually a great like super villain (laughs) just a kooky artist but honestly dude you should if if you get a chance later watch this video because it is very funny the revolver movements are very good i'm terror that is awful that's not what should be happening in No. no No, 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 no no flies wielding revolvers. Not good. (laughs) I deeply hate it. Yeah, it's not. It's not great. Um, If you could give something stupid, something stupid to wield, what would it be? Because this, great this man's thinking about it. He's thinking about it all the damn time. He's thinking, yeah, what dumb thing can I give another dumb thing? <laughs> I feel like there's something to giving, like, puppies control of a tank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, like a sea slug. Give it a giant salami that just hits somebody. <laughs> when, it, when it crawls, the salami just kind of flops around. <laughs> um... Okay, I have I have the fly revolver. Um what one moment here. Uh it's it, Yeah, nope, it, it's a... <laughs> so it's So it's so good. <laughs> it's a little different than I was imagining. It's it's a bubble of <laughs> It's a bubble of flies, yes. much much like the um, much like the blimps, and then just over on the wall is the revolver they're controlling. You know what this reminds me of? So you're a big Ninja Turtles fan. I this am a big Ninja Turtles of, fan. Of Krang, the brain guy, <laughs> yeah. but if instead of a brain, it's just a bowl of flies <laughs> <laughs> controlling a mech suit. That's a nightmare. I yeah, a huge nightmare. If if I were if I I'm trying to imagine a universe where, like, if I, as a bit, was like, all right, I have this bubble of flies, and attached to the wall is an arm with a revolver that they can control, my yeah. wife would leave immediately. <laughs> Absolutely. And she'd be wise to do so. It's just a bad... <laughs> What's funny about this, both the revolver and the machete, I think what makes me laugh about them is it just reminds me... Of or makes me visualize like a super drunk guy just vaguely threatening a whole room, just sort of <laughs> flailing about wildly with a very dangerous weapon. But it's just flies. It's just or flies. <laughs> David Bowen, you're a monster, uh, and you need to be stopped. But uh, but also keep going. But also but also let's see how far this can fucking go. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Is this just good? Brian and Eric don't belong here is now just going to be a Brian and Eric update everyone on what David Bowen's fucking up to. Yeah, this is a David Bowen watch list slash appreciation pop. <laughs> We're now officially David Bowen's like FBI agents monitoring everything that man does. But but sitting there going, damn, dude. Oh, yo, I have a crazy update for you that I actually did not tell you about. So last episode, we were talking about frogging. Yeah. pH frogging, um, which for, for those of you just tuning in uh, is, for all, is for the For all practice. the new listeners who come yeah, in every week. Yeah, for all the new listeners who roll, just rolling in in droves. It's, yeah, uh, it's not just K, uh, Sammy K-Bop on every single YouTube video giving us a kind 
literally the one soul keeping us going. <laughs> Incredible. We got to keep going for Sammy K. Bop. <laughs> what if Sammy K. Bop is frogging both of us? <laughs> I hope so. That'd be delightful. Yeah, it- that being a frogger. Uh, but so frogging is a practice of just living secretly in someone else's home, essentially squatting while someone else lives there. But so, dude, across the street from me, um, and I'm not going to reveal too much to not dox myself, of but course. across the street from from my house, I look out my window, a bunch of cop cars on the street looking out the window from my home office. See a person moving out of the house across from me with boxes. There's like public safety officers there and stuff. That house had been abandoned <gasps> for like three years the previous occupant had died i don't know who the owner was if it was owned by the bank or whatever but it was just totally abandoned no one's supposed to live there and someone was squatting no shit yeah like in the middle of suburban long island dude no shit. and apparently there is another house same deal like down the block wow 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 so it's squatting not frogging but it was really strange and i had no idea this person had been there for god knows how long That's so crazy. How do squatters rights like work? I don't know. I intend to find out. I'm going to, I'm going to do a cursory Google. I feel like it might be one of those fake things. Like when you get pulled over and you tell the police, you don't have to pay taxes because it's not in the constitution. (laughs) (laughs) That's not a real. Uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, I believe you, uh, if (laughs) you, I just typed in squatters rights into Google. Now in the state of New York, if I'm understanding this correctly, which I'll be, I'll be clear. I could not be. Uh, That's, I am super, not a lawyer, not even close. Uh, But if, if you manage to fucking 10 years, if they had stayed in that house for 10 years, Basically, they could make a legal uh, uh, a legal claim that would have some precedence in court. Like, that's my fucking house. You know what I'll say about that? That seems like a long time, but 10 years goes pretty fast. It goes pretty fast. You could do it. You could do it. So, hey, hey, if you're listening to this podcast while squatting in an abandoned house in a Long Island neighborhood, we believe in you. <laughs> yeah, just listen to one episode of ours every day. For 10 years, and you'll just, you'll cruise right through. I wonder, dude, what the craziest squatting victory ever has been. I mean, did we Google it right now? I'm I'm literally going to cry. Craziest squatting. That could go in a lot of places. Uh, I got here from listverse.com. Top 10 times squatters lived the high life. Oh, that's yeah. That's exactly what we're. Looking this is for. what we're going down, right? We're going we're going down yep. this rabbit hole for the rest of the show, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Let me uh, let me see if I can screen share you on this. One moment. One moment. Yeah, there we go, baby. Ooh. Okay, uh, so once again, I'm reading directly from listverse.com. This is a 2020 article, top 10 time, or top 10 time, top 10 time, 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 times. <laughs> uh, my stroke is over. Top 10 times squatters lived the high life. When we think of squatters, we usually think of people living in boarded up sheds or hiding in the ruins of old buildings. But once in a while, squatters get a ticket to the high life, even if it's only for a little while. Here are 10 times squatters lived the high life. Number 10 here, we got a Boca Raton mansion takeover. <clears throat> Picture here of a uh, of a mansion, a cream colored mansion with a boat in front of it on a canal. Uh, in December 2013, a man moved into a 2.5 million dollar mansion. That's a pretty cool thing to happen in most cases, and definitely comes with bragging rights. But in this case, the mansion was foreclosed, and the man who moved in, Andre L- Andre Loki Boy Barbosa. <laughs> Uh, never really Hell owned yeah. it in the first. Can, do you get to just call yourself Loki Boy? I think you, if you move, if you squat in any mansion over a million dollars, I think you get to call yourself Loki Boy. That is, that is an official criteria. legal precedent. Yeah, exactly. One man for how long do you have to squat in the mansion? It's over. It has to be worth over a million dollars. Do you just I think have if you make one it a week. 
Oh, okay. One week. week. I think one week. It's got to be more than a night because anybody can do that. But one week, it's like you're, it's like the squatting PhD. You're the doc, like instead of saying doctor, you're Loki boy. You officially legally get to add Loki boy somewhere you choose anywhere in between your first and last name. That's right. And you can tell people if they just call you Brian Miller, you can be like, I'm sorry, excuse me. It's Loki boy. I I think you need to show respect for the time and uh, (laughs) expertise. I I just like to to let you know it's. Loki boy, it's not a big deal. But if you could just say, just, just boy, it, it, it's not a big deal. But like, it is everything to me. <laughs> uh, Barbosa was a squatter. He took over the mansion for almost two months while trying to claim the property under Florida's adverse possessions law, squatters' rights. To Barbosa, this was the start of a movement to reclaim vacant properties, but just a start since he was evicted in February of 2014. He failed to claim the building as his own, but he did succeed in gaining some momentum for the movement as adverse possession claims began to pile up once his story went public. A bunch of people wanted that Loki boy title. Yeah, they did. There's too many. That's the problem with the Loki boy title. It's very competitive. It's lonely at the top. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Uh, let's see. We also got here. We we don't have to do. Let's let's find out the number one, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. There's there do seem to be some good ones here, but uh, I, well, okay. Number three here says it's one of the most famous squats in the world. We maybe have to see that one. Oh yeah, I saw. Yeah, yeah. This is a good one. Okay. Uh, the picture here uh, appears to be a uh, like the fucking Ninja Turtles layer. <laughs> Like it's yo yo yeah that's exactly what it is it's like the foot soldiers lair or whatever it it's <laughs> yeah in, in the night in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the 1990 movie um the all the teenagers go to this fucking island where there's a warehouse and uh, MC Hammer plays and all the kids play poker and smoke cigarettes and play arcade games and it's. <laughs> The only place I've ever uh, wanted to be. Do they smoke cigarettes in the movie? Are the kids smoking cigarettes in the movie? Um, I don't know. I th- I believe so. But what I remember is I a scene so. is a Sam Rockwell, the Sam Rockwell, is uh-huh. uh, giving a tour to some wayward youths. And uh, he's showing around like anything you want to do, do it. And then the kid goes, got any cigarettes? And Sam Rockwell ha- like pulls out two like cartons and is like regular or menthol. I feel like that's something that we no longer contend with as a society, and that kind of sucks. It's just children smoking. <laughs> well, they just all vape now. I guess so. I, I guess that's right. You're just you're juuling. Cigarette use has to be down, right? I refuse to. I Google think it's this. way down. I think uh, it's way down. Yeah, I think we can say as a matter of absolute fact on the show, cigarette use down. Not gonna even look at it. But vape, on the other hand, way up. Let me let me Vaping is up. Let me stick a, a fucking I don't have a joke for a future a future cigarette. Future cigarettes way up. Um okay, so this uh this spot here. I lost my page. Eric, I lost my page. Oh right. the uh <laughs> I got it, I got number it. three. Okay, okay. Right. Uh C Squat is a f- is famous among squatters worldwide. In 1989, a rundown tenement building on the Lower East Side of NYC, lacking stairs and landings, where apartments were connected by... So this really is just the fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lair. I I think it really is. Uh, ...was taken over by a group of squatters. The squatters repaired the building, including making an open venue for punk shows in the basement after the floor above collapsed. Sea Squat even had an indoor skate park by the time squatters got done with it. In 2002, squatters started the process of making them legal owners of Sea Squat. And in 2015, Sea Squat became a legal living co-op. This was one big step for squatters everywhere, uh... And one sm- uh, one big step for squatters everywhere, one small step for rundown buildings in New York City. Is C Squat still around? It can't be. I hope it is. This, this is super cool, actually. Um, this wasn't that long ago. Right? Um, 
I, uh, the Wikipedia page for C-Squat, which I'm on, right? C-Squat is the former squat house located at uh, 155 Avenue C between 9th and 10th Streets in Alphabet City neighborhood of Manhattan uh, that has been home to musicians, artists, and activists, among others. After a fire, it was taken into city ownership in 1978, and squatters moved in during 1989. The building was restored in 2002, and since then, it has been legally owned by the occupants. Its ground floor storefront now houses a museum of reclaimed urban hmm. space. This rules. Uh, how have we never, I feel like, how have we never heard of this? This is really cool. Uh, yeah, I just got, I got one more, I think, interesting section here. Uh, Museum of Reclaimed Urban Space. The Museum of Reclaimed Urban Space is the living archive of the Lower East Side Squats and Gardens located on the ground floor storefront of Sea Squat. Uh, it runs neighborhood tours highlighting the efforts of local residents and organizations to clean up vacant lots and fix up abandoned buildings for community. I, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it seems that fucking rules. Sea Squat fucking rules. That's great. I was going to ask, I wonder what happened to the original Sea Squatters. Like, are they all just accountants now? Right, you know right. I mean? Or, they work or the other way. way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, it yep. was 1989. Um, That's true. Uh, but, uh, Holy shit, that, that's so fucking cool. Wow, we stumbled on a real thing that we didn't know. That's I, I'm actually surprised that we've never heard of that. That's really strange. I know, I know. Um, huh. So strange. I never, I never <laughs> fucked around in Alphabet City that much. Oh, really? I love Alphabet City. I've Alphabet been, City I've been, fun. don't get me wrong, but like that was never okay. one of my hangouts. There's just 10 million bars. Right. <laughs> is basically why it's great. Right. There's just a billion bars. <laughs> we um, used to go to that. Did you ever go to that karaoke place we used to go to? Like after work sometimes? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Planet Rose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there a handful of times. Um, but yeah. like, I'd be like off the subway into there. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not um, running around, but yeah, yeah. Though actually, I guess, you know, for all of my like, ah, I wasn't there that much. When I, uh, when uh, I first moved to New York, I crashed in a uh, friend's spare bedroom. Around there, just right around the corner from there. That's a classic crash in a friend's spare bedroom place, right? Right. Maybe you were in C squat and you didn't even maybe there's no stairs. Everything was connected by ladders. Didn't really think too much about it. I slept in a half pipe. Just you know, I'm not always aware of my surroundings. <laughs> my roommate was Shredder. I don't know. MC <laughs> Hammer was there all the time. <laughs> the dream. The yeah. Dream. <laughs> the literal dream. We'll make it happen. We're gonna make it happen. Uh, okay, we have uh, we have some new Loki boys here on the uh, on the number one oh, squatters living the high life. Uh, squatters turn mansion into party house while millionaire owner is out of town. Uh, wow. Where's the party at? You ask, according to the listverse dot com. Well, in May of this year, uh, this year being twenty twenty, uh, according to this article, it was located at a six million dollar mansion in Sydney, Australia, where five guys took over the home while the owner was in Hong Kong on business. News reports say the house was filled with booze and drug paraphernalia, though the bedrooms and bathrooms, and out of the pool. Uh, through the bedrooms and bathrooms and out of the pool. A lone bong sat in one room, probably used for smoking, quotations, the drugs. <laughs> Got him again. Can I say, I feel like Listverse has truly cracked the code on uh, the the listicle title. If you wrote right? down, more great lists, top 10 times a monkey took a human life. <laughs> 10 people who have lived in a tree. I mean, I gotta say, I'm saving top 10 times a monkey has taken a human life for future reading. Yeah, we'll revisit this. We'll revisit all these. This is incredible. Uh, back to this mansion real fast. Uh, the squatter yeah, yeah. stayed at the mansion for nearly three weeks, or in party terms, quotations, a wild ride, before being driven out by some plumbers who showed up for maintenance reasons. Party poopers. The group of men claimed to know the owner, but when asked his name, they gave the wrong one. They then ran off when the plumbers tried to take their pictures. One of the men was caught and charged with trespassing. That means there are probably four guys out there throwing one crazy party right now. Yeah, those plumbers suck. Those plumbers suck. Why would the plumbers not just join? Don't ask questions. You're here to plumb. <laughs> 
Do what the plumbing. Are you detectives? Do, yeah, yeah what, I'm sorry. What are you getting at? What are you getting out of being a fucking little cop right now? You're a plumber. Yeah. Maybe investigate the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> very not Super Mario of you. <laughs> yeah, very on Super Mario. Wow, that sucks, man. <laughs> Though if you think of dude, the ROI on squatting in just a in a massive mansion is he if all you get is tra- you get charged with I don't know what happens. Just trespassing, what do you do? You I guess so. I I got I mean you're the one who had a squatter living uh nearby. <laughs> I should have asked him. I should have yeah. I will say this person was not arrested. They literally they were not in cuffs or anything. Well, I'm not saying they should have been. It was it was actually like a very civilized thing. Like there was just sort of some cops and a public safety officer just sort of like monitoring him huh. watching him move all his shit out and he just left yeah huh wow like he didn't seem like he got in trouble so i'm saying this is an this is a possibility for us i think i i think this is uh possibly a thing in my future <laughs> yeah we could do it we could squat so basically uh eric it sounds like that house you're talking about is up for grabs <laughs> that's what i'm getting at it's wide open baby <laughs> Oh, very good, very good. Uh, uh, whenever when everything goes downhill, we we uh we know we know what to do. That's right. Yeah, we got a spot. We got a spot to squat. Eric, we have a little time left, and we're on list verse. Uh, top ten times a monkey took a human life. Ten families who lived in a real haunting of Hill House, or ten people who actually lived with human corpses. I think we got to go monkey, right? We got to go monkey. We got to go monkey. We got to go monkey. (laughs) You can't knock a monkey in this situation. Uh, Once again, listverse.com is the 2020 article. Top 10 times a monkey took a human life. Can I say, I think part of their gimmick is they only do top 10. That's great. I think every, everything is 10. Great number. It's a very good, very strong number. Oh my God. Number six monkeys killed the deputy mayor of New Delhi, India. Uh, typically when a rogue monkey goes on the offensive in India, it happens in a small village where the people there have little to no protection. In the case of, uh, Surinder Singh Bawa, a senior government official who was the deputy mayor of New Delhi, his run-in with the rogue Rhesus Macaw led to his death, and it happened in his own home. Wow. The deputy mayor was on his balcony reading a newspaper at his home in East Delhi when a group of three or four monkeys suddenly attacked him. According to one of his neighbors, the monkeys came all of a sudden. Uh, Bawahi uh, attempted to shoo them away and in the process fell off the terrace. Okay, sounds like an incidental monkey death. <laughs> yeah, it's not a real direct. You gotta, here's the thing. If there's a monkey just monkeying around, you got to stay calm. You can't just go flailing around a balcony. This is this is a monkey manslaughter at best. That's right. That's right. I, I think mean, that's I think that's fair. I'm really into monkey law right now. <laughs> I was gonna say, I wonder if there's like a monkey lawyer. Like if it's close enough to a human that they get some kind of fair <laughs> shake at, at just justice. a chimpanzee in a little tie ready to go. Come on. That's an that's an 80s sitcom ready to go. Did you see number three? In a an alcoholic monkey went on a rampage in India. A oh. monkey named Kalua was raised by an occultist from Mirzapur, <gasps> Uttar Pradesh, India. And for some reason, the monkey was raised on a healthy diet of alcohol. It's believed that Kalua was taught to drink hard liquor and was fed monkey meat, which made for a crazed alcoholic monkey. So it's a cannibalistic <laughs> so it's, alcoholic monkey. A, a crazy occult cannibal alcoholic monkey. Get Dude, your shit together, Kalua. Get your shit together. <laughs> He's out of control. So the authorities found the monkey's owner dead, which likely led to severe withdrawal as Kalua could no longer drink as he was accustomed to. This led to a period of hyperaggression and the monkey took to the streets where he attacked 250 people. He preferred to attack the faces of women and children and he fled to the forest of Mirzapur where where it took a while for authorities to trap him. Once he was taken to the Kanpar Zoological Park, the zookeepers worked with him in an attempt to rehabilitate the monkey, but all efforts oh, failed. Oh, he no. He would only eat meat and refused all fruit and vegetables. Ultimately, he was transferred away from others of his kind and placed in solitary confinement, where he will remain for the rest of his life. Oh, my God. How do we get Kalua interviewed on this show? <laughs> Let's get Kalua on the show. Let's get Kalua I feel like on the show. Kind of a light sentence for like a homicidal maniac monkey. <laughs> 
Like, we'll just separate you from the others. <laughs> kill it. Kill him. Kill him. Just... Kill I think it's maybe all right to put that monkey out of his misery, right? Yeah, I feel like if a dog, like, bites a toddler, they're dead. <laughs> yeah, right, right. They don't go to a special part of the zoo. They're just <laughs> dead. <laughs> Number one, before we get out of here, is a this. monkey killed a king in Greece. <laughs> monkey of the year. <laughs> In 1920, the 27-year-old king of Greece, Alexander, was the victim of a monkey attack. Uh, The incident took place on the 2nd of October, 1919, uh, when King Alexander went for a walk with his dog in the private park of the Tatoi Estate outside Athens. Mm -hmm. When a monkey attacked his majesty's dog, Fritz, the king ran to his dog's aid. The monkey was a Barbary macaw. I'm certainly not saying what that fucking... M A C. I think, I think that's right. I think it is macaw. I always thought a macaw was a bird. Maybe it is. That's probably what I'm thinking of. But I also can't maca q maca key ma- monkey. <laughs> <laughs> monkey monkey. It's it was, a monkey kind of. Monkey. It's a monkey kind. Just one of the one of the monkey monkeys, uh, and belonged to someone who worked at the palace. Pet monkey. Um. While King Alexander was trying to pry the two animals apart, another monkey came up from behind and bit the king on his leg and upper body. No respect for, like, the monarchy, these monkeys. No, zero. Uh, The king had his wounds dressed, and he felt that he wasn't seriously injured, so he kept the incident from the public. You don't want to go talking about a monkey bite if it's not that big of a deal, right? It's embarrassing. Right? I got got bit by a monkey. I got bit by a monkey. Can't just be saying that. Kings are supposed to be immune to monkeys. That's uh, right. That's, that's for deputy mayors. <laughs> that's right. And below. That's for like a count, a baron. Maybe you're getting bit by a monkey. A king? No, the sir. king? No, sir. No. Um, unfortunately, both bites became infected. And while amputation of the leg may have saved him, none of the, ki- none of the doctors were willing to risk the king's leg should it not work. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's it sounds like one of those like we can cut off the leg and maybe that'll save you, but like I don't want to be the guy who cut off the king's leg and he still died anyway. <laughs> you don't want it, to, you can't take that risk, right? No. Um eventually the king died 23 days after he was first bitten. The death led to his father's resumption of his kingly de- wow, new king came up or the old king had to get back had to unretire because of a monkey. Wow. Um <clears throat> Uh, which had numerous unforeseen consequences, including the losing of the Greco-Turkish War. Winston Churchill laid some serious blame on the Barbary macaw when he said it was a monkey bite that caused the death of those 250,000 people. I wonder if that was a Turkish monkey. Right? Right? An inside job. That's right. Unconventional warfare. It's uh, that, that monkey... May have been an assassin. So we got we got plants wielding machetes. Assa- we got fly flying blimps. We've got assassin monkeys. F- you fly fly swatting blimps, fly orbs controlling revolvers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, exactly. We're facing it's a it's a tough world out there. <laughs> I think we've learned nothing else. It is a very tough world, and we it's are a tough outmatched. World out there. We're out. We just got to find a safe place to squat and just lay low for at least 10 years. You you asked at the top of the show the hierarchy of like living beings. We're at the bottom, baby. We need to be very scared. We thought we were at the top. We thought we were the apex part. Our hubris. (laughs) Yeah, we're fools. (laughs) Um. This has been uh, Brian and Eric don't belong here. We, uh, We have a Twitter. We uh, we have a blog. It's BrianandEric.show. The Twitter is at BrianandEricPod. I think that's everything. You got anything? I think that's it, man. I think we did it again. I think we did it again. Good night, everybody. Okay.